Comic collecting history was made this week. Let's talk about the hottest comic books in the world. We haven't seen sales like this in a long time, if ever. Multiple 9.8s, blue chip keys, not only breaking records, but setting records and setting a new ceiling. Hit the subscribe button. We're here every single week covering the hottest comic books in the world. And at the list at number 10, we have Conan number one. The first appearance of Conan at Marvel Comics. And we have a 6.5 up 15%, 7.5 AO 5%. And 8.5 had two copies outsell the recent 12-month average, with the highest being for 9.37, an increase of 52%. What's going on with Conan? I don't know, because we also have a 9.0 that sold for $840. That's 9% above average. The 9.2 sold for its yearly high, $1,200, which is 21% above average. And then we've got the 9.8 coming in 20% above its 12-month average, selling for $8,400. And it's the second highest sale in 9.8. But the first one is really more of an outlier. The heights of 9.8 Conan 1 were reached in 2022 for seemingly $14,000. But that was absurdly high, suspiciously high. Nearly double what the surrounding 9.8 sales were going for at the time, which were six to $7,000. It wouldn't be until 2023 where we saw this book at a 9.8 reach a real high of 8100 making this $8,400 sale not only impressive, not only the ceiling, but the new real record high. And this book has been hot. It keeps on showing up on the list. We talked about it a month ago. And since then, there have been 29 more slabs added to the census, including one more 9.8. Now, we keep talking about that Red Sonja trailer, how it came out during Comic-Con. We still haven't seen it yet. But you guys, make sure to mention in the comments the current ongoing series by Titan Comics. It's on issue 10. And if you want to get caught up, the trade paperback came out just two months ago. Conan the Barbarian, Volume 1, Bound in Black Stone. Catch up on Conan at Titan while well, we take you over to number nine on the list with Fantastic Four issue number 50. Jem's favorite Silver Surfer cover. I was going to say we always rag on this book, but it is part of the Holy Trinity, the Galactus Silver Surfer saga, and they put some respect on its name this week. The 3.5 is up 4%. The 4.0 is up 20%. The 4.5 can't even keep up, selling for $251, still 2% above average. The 5.0 is up 8%. The 7.5 is up 23%. And the CGC 9.6 sold for $19,800. 2% above its 12-month average. There's only 12 copies of this book rated at a 9.6 for the classic Silver Surfer versus Galactus, the second Galactus, third Silver Surfer, the iconic Jack Kirby cover, and Johnny Storm going to college. Well, last year, a 9.6, two of which sold for the exact same price at $19,200, making this $19,800 sale immense, especially because there are so few that exist. There's only three graded of this book in a 9.8. And we haven't seen one of those sell since 2016. This was one of the five books that Marvel put up on their website that you can read for free to get ready for the movie. It was Fantastic Four issue one, 48, 49, 50, and Fantastic Four Life Story issue one, leading us to believe that they may borrow from this issue for the movie. How do you feel about that shut up all casting? I thought of you right away when I heard. <laughs> Same here. Comic fam, keep up with us. Beat the release of this video and find out what books are going to be on the hot 10 by downloading Key Collector Comics, the app we use to source all comic news from. Use code TOM101 to unlock a free two-week subscription. Support the show and get access to the hot 10 and the trending 20 before we hit the mic. Moving on to number eight, we have another incredible 9.8 sale, pun intended. We have incredible Incredible Hulk annual one with that classic Jim Steranko cover. Calling this a book an iconic cover doesn't do this book justice. Jim Steranko, one of the stars of the Silver Age, not only created something that's so impactful and so affordable, especially in mid-grade, and the story that he has with it is one that you need to hear in person because he still does conventions and he loves telling stories about his time at the bullpen. Now, there's no doubt that Jim did an amazing, iconic cover here, but Marvel felt like the face was too ugly. They tapped Marie Severin to redo it, and that's where we end up with this final image. The CGC 2.0 up 15%. The 3.0 is up 14%. The 3.5 sold for a buck 65. That's 2% above average. And the 5.0 sold for just at about average, $200. 
But then we have the CGC 9.8 selling for $13,200, 18% above average. There's only 31 copies of this book rated at a 9.8. The heights it reached was a little above $14,000. This book has barely moved much despite market conditions. And it's probably because people like to pick it up for their PC. There's not much else going on for the Hulk. Outside that strength, goodness. Moving on to the list at number seven, we have Invincible number one, and the prices are going up. And is it because of Amazon? Well, yeah, but it's also because of a Kickstarter. We'll get to it. The 9.0 is up 4%, the 926%, and we clocked in three year-long highs for this book between 9.4 and 9.8. The 9.4 hit $1,200, 27% above. The 9.6 hit $1,849, 31% above. And the 9.8 just sold for $4,200, where this book could have been secured around the $3,000 mark for the last year. Skybound Entertainment recently launched a Kickstarter to crowd fund their very own invincible video game raising over four hundred and fifty thousand dollars on his very first day not only that we know that season three is in production but there is a now deleted line on the website for that campaign teasing seasons four and five it seems like they've already been greenlit for future seasons of this animation i'm just waiting for a live action adaptation it seems inevitable Looking at the list at number six, we have some of the safest spec that's happening. Ghost Rider, issue number one. And not much going on with Ghost Rider besides the current arc and comics, both Moon Knight and Ghost Rider revealed to be villains, but it is the first appearance in cameo of Damien Hellstrom, and it's the first solo ongoing title. The 4.0 selling for $375, 14% above average. The 5.0 is up 7%. The 6.0 is up 15%. Two 7.0s outperformed its 12-month average, the highest coming in at 515. And two 8.5s also outperformed that 12-month average with the highest coming in at $750. There's not a whole lot of superheroes that could be introduced to the MCU that's going to cause as big of a shakeup as, let's say, Silver Surfer, the first Marvel family, or Ghost Rider. And let's not forget last year's major swing for the occult. You know, we're talking Werewolf by Night and Blade that's still incoming. It seems like Marvel is still primed to reintroduce Ghost Rider of some kind on the big screen, making this spec seem very safe, especially because of how beloved this character is. It has been about six months since we talked about Ghost Rider issue one, but since then there have been 225 more slabs added to the census, bringing that total up to over 4,600. Now in that 225, there are four more 9.4s, two more 9.6s, and three more 9.8s. And as mentioned by Jem, Ghost Rider Final Vengeance revealed that the hood is now the new spirit of vengeance. And if you want to secure a copy of issue number one, you can go to ComicTom101.com right now and join the May Mystery Mail Call, where I've teamed up with my buddy Bry from Bry's Comics to release a in Hyuk Lee issue number one guaranteed one per box. Support the show, join the mail call, secure that book as we move on to number five. It's a blue chip key and it just sold for the most that this book has ever sold in comic book history. Avengers number one. Last week we mentioned about a new sale that had yet been reported on Key Collector because of the timing of the filming. I mean, if we get the records, we're going to mention them in between the filming dates. Well, that price was set at $432,000, 17% higher than an Avengers 1 had ever sold on a 9.6, which is the highest graded copy of which five exist on the census. And then we have the trickle down effect, the 2.5 up 2%, the 3.0 selling at its 12 month average, 2,800, the 7.0 is up 16% and the 8.0 just sold for 20 grand, 11% above average. We were hearing a lot of news about Captain America Brave New World over the last couple months. Test screenings going incredibly poorly. People walking out of the theater. Uh, people saying that the political narrative was boring, that the love narrative was dull and unbelievable. But CinemaCon happened over this last week and audience were previewed to 10 minutes of footage and they're raving about it now. I can't help but think it's because of Harrison Ford. They got to see the footage over at CinemaCon, but we did get an official picture of Harrison Ford as General Thunderbolt Ross speaking to the new Captain America, and he tells him that he wants him to assemble the new Avengers. A couple of weeks ago, we talked about the Avengers roster, or lack thereof, so interesting to see who he assembles for this team. It makes sense that he would tap Sam Wilson, Captain America, because of 
their shared military experience. I don't think that this is going to be a buddy cop type of movie, but I definitely think that there's more of a relationship between these two characters than we've probably ever seen in the MCU in regards to military personnel. Shout out to Rhodey. And speaking of the war machine, number four on the list is another blue chip key that just sold for the highest that it has ever sold for in comic book history. First appearance of Iron Man. We have Tales of Suspense, issue number 39. One of my least favorite favorite Silver Age covers, but a tough as hell book. There is only one copy graded at a 9.8. There are only five copies graded at a 9.6. And this book just had its only public recorded sale of a 9.8 take place this past week, and it was a monster. Before we talk about that, let's talk about the entry level. CGC 1.0 is sold for $4,450. It's 20% above its 12-month average, and that's the entry fee if you want to get into this book the 7.0 sold for 24 grand that's six percent above average and the 8.0 sold for 32,400 dollars two percent above average after just winning an Oscar for his role in Oppenheimer he was asked about reprising his role as Iron Man and this is what he had to say happily it's too integral a part of my DNA. That role chose me. And look, I always say, never ever bet against Kevin Feige. It is a losing bet. He is the house. He will always win. Hearing Robert Downey Jr. say that does give me some more confidence because I used to feel the same way. I put my trust in Feige. I thought he could do no wrong, but I haven't felt that way for the last couple of years. Here's to a bright future for the MCU as we talk about this CGC 9.8 sale, the only one in existence, setting a record for $840,000. Woo, that's some Tony Stark money. Let's look at the list here at number three with more Comic collecting history being made with a Daredevil number one. First appearance of Foggy Nelson. First appearance of Karen Page. And yeah, first appearance of Daredevil. We have only 9.8s making up three copies on the census. Very scarce. And the last time one sold was never until this past week. And just in time, Daredevil Born Again wrapped filming this very week. The CGC 3.5 is up 3%. The 5.0 is up 7%. The 5.5 up 2%. And the 7.0 sold for 7200 4% above average. Can you believe it, Jem? I mean, it's been over four years that we've been covering this very list every week without skipping a beat. Rain or shine, hit the subscribe button. And there is a handful of comics that sold in high grade that kind of started the comic boom. And this book was one of them at a 9.6 back in April 2021 when we reported on it when it sold for $150,000. And that was a 9.6 in which there are only 31 copies known to exist. I mean, that's what's on the census. Well, there are three 9.8s and the first one sold publicly this past week, setting the ceiling for a 9.8 Daredevil number one at $360,000. Such a full circle moment for us to be able to report on that 9.6 and now the 9.8. Will it cause the same trickle down effect like the 9.6? I don't know, we're in different times, but you know, we'll be watching. Which brings us to number two on the list with Giant Size X-Men number one, the first appearance of the new team. A book that doesn't need any outside reasons to be popular and to sell, but plenty of outside reasons for this book to spike this past week. Yeah, I kind of thought that the X-Men and the MCU would cause the X-Men hype, but who would have known it would have been X-Men 97, which they've been doing an amazing job. By the time you guys see this, episode six should be out, and I'm excited to watch. But we have two yearly highs to report on. We'll start with the lower grades, the 6.5, selling for 2,500. That's 5% above average. The 7.5, selling for three grand, staying at that average. The 8.0 is up 3%, the 8.5 is up 2%. And then we got the CGC 9.0 for a yearly high, selling for $5,028, 6% above average. And then the 9.2, coming in at 6,200. Again, the yearly high, and that's a 13% increase. We've seen this book in a 9.8 make a grinding halt. They are not coming up nearly as much as they have in prior years because it's selling for so cheap. A lot of people have invested high. I mean, this book hit $72,000 in 2021. The last reported sale was this month for $24,000. Because this book is coming up less than it has in recent years tells me that it's approaching rock bottom in high grade. Keep an eye out on Giant Size X-Men number one. Hit the subscribe button. Slap the like button. We need your support. You know we're going to be here next week. And let's hit him with the number one hottest book 
in the world. And if you thought we weren't going to have any Deadpool vs. Wolverine books on the list, you would be wrong. For the one millionth time, we've got Wolverine issue one, the first miniseries, the iconic Frank Miller cover. This book is clearly the number one target for all collectors, all speculators. Deadpool 3, the only Marvel movie coming out this year. And it's looking so damn good because at CinemaCon, not only did we get a preview of Deadpool 3 with new footage, we see Dogpool. I mean, I'm only seeing pictures because I haven't actually seen the footage, but I'm seeing like reviews of it, people talking about what they saw. And Kevin Feige dropped an F-bomb. And I think that right there is very revealing about Deadpool 3. A lot of the things that people were worried about was whether or not the Disney-fication, is that the right word, Jem, was going to throttle this movie. And I think Kevin Feige swearing on stage set the right tone. Yeah, between Robert Downey Jr. willing to reprise his role as Iron Man and telling us to believe in Feige, to having Feige on stage dropping F-bombs about this movie, it's got me a little bit excited and collectors as well. There are a slew of sales here. Let's start with the newsstand 7.5, selling for $140, 39% above its 12-month average. The 8.0 is up 42%, so is the 8.5. Two 8.5s outperformed that average this week. The 9.0, same thing, 10% up. The 9.2, 15% up. All of these have multiple copies outperforming the 12-month average. To qualify for the hot 10, it takes at least three high-performing sales. So when we tell you that the 9.2, 9.4, and 9.6 all had multiple sales that outdid the recent 12-month average, it tells you that the book is scalding hot. The 9.6 sold for 314, and five copies outsold that recent 12-month average, and that's an increase of 19%. The newsstand 9.6 sold for $400, 13% above its recent 12-month, and then we have a 9.8. This book was hovering in the $550 to $600 range when we first started reporting on it. The last sale took place this past week at its height of $899. That's an increase of 35%. And two copies outperformed that recent 12-month average. And then we have a newsstand 9.8. Two copies outsold the 12-month average, the highest being for $1,550, marking a 24% uptick when you compare it to the recent 12-month average. Now, that's a big sale for the direct market 9.8. That's why you got to be watching these videos and you have to be a savvy shopper because the last GPA sale was $633. So you can still find it for about average. What do you think about Deadpool 3? You feeling optimistic? Let us know in the comment section below. I want to know what you're reading. Are you reading Moon Knight? Ghost Rider? Conan? Let us know. We may mention it in a future video. And of course, as always, eat responsibly and stay minty fresh. Enough said.